Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy. Today we are looking at number lines. Specifically, we are looking at rational numbers on number lines. So we're going to talk about, first of all, what is a rational number? What makes it special and different from other numbers we've worked with? Then we're going to practice with all different types of number lines. First off, let's talk about whole numbers. Whole numbers are positive numbers and zero. So you can start with zero and get a three and a four and a five and a two and a six and a one. These are examples of whole numbers, positive numbers and zero. All right, that is whole numbers. Now, when we go into integers, integers are positive numbers, they're opposites and zero. In other words, it can include positive numbers and their counterparts, the negative ones. Let's look at some examples. One would go with negative one. Three is negative three, four would be negative four. Those are the opposites. Five, the opposite is negative five. Negative six is the opposite of six and negative two is the opposite of positive two. So integers include positive numbers, their opposites and zero. So positive, negatives, and zeros. Now, the next set of numbers we're going to talk about are rational numbers. They include fractions that are made by integers. In other words, any combination of these integers that we have on the board made into fractions are rational numbers. So they include positive fractions, negative fractions, and zero. So let's look at some examples of rational numbers. We could have one over two. You could have negative three over four. You could have negative one ninth, positive two thirds, 20 over four. These are examples of rational numbers. So they include positive and negative fractions, basically. All right, so we are going to look at number lines with positive and negative fractions and all other different types of number lines because rational numbers can include just regular integers, whole numbers, zero. It can include all of that. So basically, we're going to make number lines that include just about everything. All right, let's talk about horizontal number lines just as a quick review if you've never seen a number line before. Um, first of all, they are increasing when they move from left to right. This could be positive or negative. It doesn't determine whether it's positive or negative. If you are moving from the left to the right, your numbers will be increasing. When you move from the right to the left, the numbers are decreasing. This dotted line here is called the origin. That is at zero. Zero is always the origin. That's our starting point. And when we're looking at a number line, a horizontal number line like this, everything to the left of the origin is negative. Everything to the right of the origin is positive. That's the basics of a number line. That's not going to change whether we put in whole numbers, integers, or rational numbers. We want to look at this with a vertical number line so that you're also familiar with this. The most common place to see this in real life is a thermometer. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Again, increasing is moving up, decreasing is moving down. And when I say increasing and decreasing, notice these arrows transcend that zero point. You can be increasing in temperature even though it's still below zero, or you could be decreasing in temperature even though it stays above zero. It has nothing to do with positives and negatives, the increasing and decreasing. It's just the movement of numbers. If it's moving upwards, it's increasing. If it's moving downwards, it's decreasing. That um, dotted line I have here, that is the origin at zero. Anything below zero is negative. Anything above zero is positive on a vertical number line. Now let's start talking about the points. There are two basic types of questions that you can ask when looking at a number line. You can either ask, 
you can be given points and asked to label those points, or you can be given the numbers, the labels, and asked to put dots on a number line. We could also ask some specifics about definitions, like what's on the left of the zero, what's on the right of the zero. But these are the two basic um, parts we're going to look at, labeling points and then actually drawing points on there. So if I give you some points and I ask you to label those points, that'll look like this. So we have um, the point, the blue point way over there that, that is five. It's at the point five. These ones are pretty obvious because it's on a, an already labeled point. However, when you go to a point like the red point, that one becomes a little bit more challenging. What would you say the, the label for that red point is? This is a challenging one, probably the most challenging of the rational numbers. This one is negative two and a half. It's between negative two and negative three. So you can see that that's there. Um, as you move to the left, your numbers are decreasing and negative two and a half is less than negative two. We also have the point negative four and we have a positive one and a half right here. I find with negative fractions, they tend to be the most difficult. So the red point on here, I think is the most challenging. The point one and a half is also going to throw some people off um, because it's working with fractions and maybe we haven't done that in the past. But those half points are points in between two numbers. So the ones that are not labeled there are going to be half points. All right, let's go ahead and do this with a vertical line. If I was given this point up here, that blue point, that would be the point four, right? That one's pretty straightforward. Now let's move down a couple of them. If you've got the, this point here, that is positive one and a half. When we go below zero, again, we're getting into negative fractions. So try that one out. What would you label that point? It's between zero and negative one. That's the point negative one half. It's halfway between zero and negative one. It's still a negative number, but that's a half point, right? And this point is a very special one. It's the origin and the origin is always on zero. All right, now we're going to actually give you some labels and ask you to draw out those points on the number line. Obviously you can't do that without drawing markers on your parents' computer screen, which I do not encourage. All right, what I'd like you to do is to try that out. Maybe, um, I don't really endorse even touching computer screens, but Try and see if you can figure out where those points would land. All right, here we go. Our first point, one, that's the orange point. That would go right here on the number line. That one's pretty straightforward. It's a positive whole number, not bad. The next one, again, probably the most challenging, a negative mixed number, a number and a fraction. Negative three and one half. For this, I start at the origin, zero, and I start moving to, um, left towards that number negative three. I remember that three and one half is halfway between three and four. So that point is going to be here, negative three and a half. The most common error here is to put it actually at the point of negative two and a half because we sometimes think, oh, a half, that's gonna increase it. But when we are a negative number, remember it's between negative three and negative four. The next one we'll do is the green point one half that's located right here. And then the blue point negative one would be located here. I do need to talk about one other thing with, with number lines and that is scale. Sometimes the each dash does not represent an entire number. You saw that in the previous one. Each, each dash on the number line represented one half. Well, in this case, each dash on the number line represents something that's bigger than one. And that's another challenge with number lines that we want to try and conquer in this lesson. 
In this case, try to look at this number line and figure out what does each dash on the number line represent. If you notice, it starts at 0, and then the first labeled point is 10, and then the second labeled point is 20. But what are those incremental points in between? Those would be fives. We're counting by fives on this number line. It goes 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And that's the scale for this. This is a scale of five. So go ahead and try to label these points on this number line. Here's where those points would land. 15 is right between 10 and 20. Negative 25 is between negative 20 and negative 30. This is similar to those half points, right? It's very similar to half points, and that's why we do this scale at the same time, because it's really important that we recognize 20 and 30, right? We go between 20 and 30, and we'll have 25 in between. Just like when we go between negative 2 and negative 3, negative 2 and a half is in between. All right, the point, um, let's do the green point next. 50 is way up there, and negative 10 would be located right there. A couple things to remember. When we're working with horizontal, right is increasing, left is decreasing. When we're working with vertical, up is increasing and down is decreasing. You will work with these things in your future, I guarantee it. So take a look at the vocabulary at the beginning of the lesson. Also try and focus on the um, labeling of points. And when you're given a point, um, try and identify where it is. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Make sure to practice using that worksheet. Good luck on the quiz. Have a wonderful day.